Hey guys, we are back with some more Checking the Lions franchise mode, and in this one, we are going to finish off year number one. We're just going to skip right to the end of the regular season, as I don't believe this team is going to be pulling off any kind of comebacks of any sort. We are I don't see us surpassing Montreal or Boston, especially not with the roster that we have. I'll show you guys the lines real quick. I did make a few line changes since the end of the last one, but <laughs> it's not going to get much done, as you would Yes, based off the players that we traded, including Tyson Berry, Gus Nyquist, Marcus Johansson. So, yeah, we're just riding out the rest of the season here. I did manage to get a plus three on that second line with the Mesikov, Hintz, and Janssen. But everywhere else, there's basically not much chemistry to be found. You have Foot and Shea with a plus three on that third defensive pairing as well. But not much after that. So... Demko, good luck. <laughs> We're, uh, you're you're going to need it. I have a feeling. So let's get straight to the end of the regular season and hopefully into the offseason in this one. So we have finished the regular season, 36, 35, and 11. Where does that leave us in the entire league? We are 24th in the entire league. So I guess all we can really hope for at this point is our slight odds at getting the first overall pick. Or I would even be happy with the top three. But let's check out the player stats for the season here. You have Ropa Hintz leading the team with 51 points. Pretty obvious where our struggles were happening this season for the most part. You have Janssen with 50, 49 for Richie, 48 for Nemesnikov, 44 for Brown, 32 for Donato, 29 for Bluger, 23 for Cha, 22 for Larson, 22 for Shea, 19 for Ogpozo, 19 for Lievo, 15 for Bacchus, all these guys. Yeah, you have... Foot with three points in 19 games played. And then you have Demko with a 908 save percentage. Gillies had a 922 and a 947 for Bersois in four games. And on the AHL side of things, the Paladins have made the playoffs, just barely, but they did. So we're going to follow them in their playoff run. And then we'll make our way into the offseason. All right, so Prague is up against the Belleville Senators. Let's see what happens here in this five-game series. You have a game one win. Game 2 loss. Mueller is injured until the 19th. That should be fairly soon. 3 nothing win in game number 3. One more win and we move on. It's going to be that. It's going to be a game 4 overtime loss. We have game number 5. It's going to happen. That's going to be a 3-1 loss, unfortunately. So the good news about this draft is that we do have three first round picks. Our own and Montreal and Toronto's, but I believe Montreal and Toronto both made the playoffs so we only have one lottery pick but that is okay yeah both Montreal and Toronto made the playoffs and not only made the playoffs but Montreal has actually moved on to the second round so that pick gets pushed even further back so uh Florida it'd be nice if you could do us a favor here and get Toronto out of the playoffs come on Florida beat Toronto in game seven please that's unfortunate <laughs> and the Stanley Cup champions are the Boston Bruins the Calder Cup Goes to the Texas Stars. And we will now make our way to the draft lottery. We are staying at ninth overall. Alright, so... Didn't get lucky there, unfortunately. But let's see who is available at 9. You have Stillman, Gunther, and Lambo. So definitely some good picks there. I don't know about Stillman. We, we don't have anything scouted on him. But... I'm gonna guess... That... He's an offensive defense, maybe a two-way defenseman. He's six foot five as well, so big boy. Uh, is, is certainly, and he's in the top ten, so I wouldn't say he'd be a bad pick by any stretch. He's at least a medium top four. But then you have Lambos, who he might be three years away. I'm not sure. His puck skills are a little eh. Gunther would definitely be the better option as far as NHL readiness. Because he's only two years away, it appears. Yeah, 41 goals, 48 assists. But the wild card here is Ralph Stillman. Do I want a six foot five defenseman who may possibly be a two way, maybe an offensive defenseman? But we know absolutely nothing about him. So I'm not sure if I want to take that risk. Holy moly, look at Aaron's. <laughs> wow. 49 goals and 72 assists in the U.S. League for 121 points in 64 games. He is almost definitely going to be NHL ready for next year. Can't wait to see him in action. All right, let's take a look at the retirements. Who do we have this year? We have Marlowe, Hosa, Zetterberg, Perry, Char retires. So, I mean, that was expected. 44 years of age. A good career for him nonetheless. Louis Erickson retires. Wah. Molson, Hainsey, and then in goal, you have Fast, 
And uh, that is about it as far as goaltenders of note. So now getting into the year two draft, let's see if anyone wants to trade up. St. Louis wants to give up their pick. Now, what would I be able to get at number seven if we were to get St. Louis's pick? It looks like Cylinder and Wah will be available at that point. I don't know if that's anything I would want to trade up for. Yeah, I'm not going to trade for that pick. It's... It's not worth it, in my opinion. But as far as our pick goes, we have these three as options, Stillman, Gunther, and Lambos. I was debating between Stillman and Lambos, because Lambos, I'm pretty sure he has the medium elite, but the game also says he's probably four years away from the NHL. He's got that D for puck skills, which I'm really not a fan of. And what I was really looking at, though, between these two, was that Lambos, who plays in the C- league, only had 21 points as a defenseman. And you take a look at Stillman, who also plays in the C-minus league in the U.S. East. Nine goals and 39 assists, almost 50 points. So that's that's a huge point for Stillman there. And I think I'd be willing to take the risk for Stillman over Lambos because he looks more NHL ready. And I don't know if he has the medium elite or not. I'm going to guess he has a medium top four. But if he is a medium elite, that is an absolute steal. Now, I know Gunther is immediately late, but when you consider the fact that we have Devin Aronson already, who is a sniper, I, I think I'd rather take a chance on the defenseman here, because I don't know if he's a medium elite, but if he is, I, I'm i going to be very upset if I pass on him and we find out he's a medium elite. <laughs> so that was my thought process there. So I think we are going to be taking him with our pick as long as he is still there. So let's see what the New York Islanders take here at number one. It is going to be Atu Rati with that high elite, 70 overall. Let's see what Minnesota and Ottawa take. Korolak goes to the Minnesota Wild, 81 overall, medium elite. Sniper ready to go for the NHL. Ottawa takes Talquist, 76 overall, defensive defenseman. And let's just skip ahead to our pick because I don't think I would want to trade for St. Louis's pick. So we're on the clock now. And I think, once again, I want to go for Stillman. I mean, I know there's Clark available. Maybe I could get Buffalo or Calgary's pick and get one of them then. But I think I want to focus on defensemen this draft no matter what. I think I want to take a chance on Stillman. He may be a medium top four. He may be a medium elite. I don't know about that for sure. But all I'm looking at is his point totals in his current league, which is matching Carson Lambos's league, and it's more than double of what Carson Lambos has. So I'm going based off that. Make pick Ralph Stillman. Welcome to the Czech Republic. Medium elite 75 overall. Let's go. I'm so glad I made that pick. 75 overall, medium top four, or uh, minor top four, defenseman role, I should say. Uh, medium elite potential. That, that was a clutch pick. That was a clutch pick. And you know that's better than Carson Lambos or uh, Brian Clark are right now. So I am very, very happy with that pick. Ralph Stillman, welcome to the team. Now that being said, it would be nice to get someone like Brant Clark if I could trade for the 11th or 12th overall pick. Chicago doesn't want to give up their pick, so I don't think we're getting Gunther. But I could try for Buffalo's pick, and maybe we could get two medium elite defensemen on board here. Yeah, that's looking nice. Aronson and Stillman, the future of this franchise. Now the question is, who would I trade? Maybe I I might be able to move up with Toronto or Montreal's pick to get to number 12. So what if I offer you, let's say 30 and 41? Would that be sufficient for number 12? I, I think Buffalo would want a player in there, especially since that's mainly what they're asking for. And they're a buyer. Right, so I, I would want to give them something that they want. Maybe Nemesnikov. Nemesnikov grew a little bit. He grew to an 82 as a third-line score. He fits our second-line chemistry perfectly, though. Is he the same kind of player as Janssen? Yeah, that could be a... If we find, like, a power forward for that line and get a plus five on that line, Nemesnikov and Janssen could have some really good growth. Yeah, I think I want to hold on to Nemesnikov. Now, what about Richie? Because... The thing is, Richie had that plus five on the first line last year, and he still didn't really do too well. He's up to an 83. Uh, yeah, he's only on a one-year deal anyway, so I, I don't think... Okay, so yeah, Gunther goes to the Blackhawks. Now let's try to trade for that Buffalo pick. 
I wouldn't mind trading Connor Brown. He doesn't have the best chemistry. And I think I want to go for a sniper playmaker power forward combination, at least on the first three lines. So that would leave him on the fourth line. That's what I'm envisioning anyway. I don't know how that would actually work out for those, for the top three lines. But even Connor Brown's defensive stats aren't fantastic, you know. I like my third and fourth liners to have a lot of hits and a good takeaway giveaway ratio. Now, his, his takeaway and giveaway ratio is good, but the hits aren't really there. And neither are the face-offs, so it's not like he has any utility as a center either. Yeah, I think Connor Brown might be the one going here in this deal. He's on a multi-year deal for 3.6 mil. And again, he had, he had a decent season last year. 22 goals, 22 assists. But I don't think he's going to fit into the long-term uh, of what I vision of what I have for this team. So, yeah, we'll add Connor Brown to this deal. So the 30th, the 41st, and Connor Brown for the 12th overall pick. Proposed trade, there it is. So Calgary takes Hermie, a medium top six left wing sniper. So now that means that Lambos and Clark are both available. Hmm. Now the question becomes, Lambos or Clark, which one do we want? I think I'm going to call a timeout here. Clark has 10 goals, 20 assists in 63 games played. I like his... Grades better than Lambo. Well, from what we're seeing here, Clark's defense is a D as a defenseman. And then you have Lambos, whose puck skills are a D. So I'm not entirely sure which one I would prefer. We know Lambos' shooting is at A-. minus. Physicality is at a B-. minus. What about Clark? Mm. Senses seem like they're the same. So offensive awareness... I don't think would be too much of a difference for Clark as opposed to Lambos. What about this co continent guy? He looks like a playmaker, although he did have two goals and one assist in Liga. 36 penalty minutes, three years away from the NHL. So not bad, but I, I still want that defensive partner for, uh, oh, what's his name? <laughs> I for, or forgot his name, uh, Stillman. Now, if we're going based off the fact that Stillman's a lefty, which I'm pretty sure he is, if we take a look at Emmett again, yeah, he's a lefty. Then we could go for the righty in Brent Clark, because I'm pretty sure Lambos is a lefty, yeah. Now, we do have a scheme fit on Clark. He's shoot balanced, whereas we do not on Lambos. Shoot pinch, but with the two bar. This is actually kind of tough, because there, there's not too much separation between them. It's clear that Brent Clark is better offensively, because his puck skills are at that C-, minus, whereas Lambos are, is at a D. And he has more points as well. I think I'm going to go with Lambos because the only thing he really has to work on is his puck skills. Whereas Clark, his skating might be at a D. Same for his defense. Physical at a, might be at a C-. minus. So overall, I think Lambos takes the slight edge over Clark for me. So welcome to the team, Carson Lambos. He is a 62 overall medium elite two-way defenseman. All right. He's clearly going to take a few years. But once he's ready, hopefully... He'll be, uh, he'll be nice and solid back there on the back end. So, Continent was a medium top six two-way forward. Glad we took Lambos there. We definitely needed the medium elite defenseman over the medium top six forward. I will take that any day. Now, let's see. What about Clark? 60 overall medium elite. Let's not forget, we do have pick 19 still, Montreal's pick. So, let's review the draft class once more and see who will be available at that point. So, you've got Kidney. Bolduc, you have Radulov, the guaranteed medium top six, who is three years away from the NHL, so probably in his mid-60s. Mapletoff, you could take a chance on another, another defenseman. I'm thinking it's going to be Radulov just so we could get some variety in there. We've already taken two defensemen. We have our left-wing sniper in Aronson, so we may as well get a nice center two-way forward here in Radulov. Presuming he's still available at that point, but I'm pretty sure he will be. So let's simulate up to our pick number 19. Yeah, so he's still available. I don't know about Bull Duke. I think I would rather take the guaranteed medium top six in Radulov. Let's just check gems real quick. You got two gems, McCutcheon and Wallstat, both possibly medium elite goalies. This guy is definitely a medium elite. He's five years away. Wallstat is four years away. And his overall grades look better, so... I think Wallstat is definitely someone I want to target, as well as McCutcheon later on. So, you know, I'll get two possible medium elite goaltenders, have them compete and see which one will be NHL ready first. I'm guessing Wallstat, but still good to know that those two are there. 
Uh, but with this pick, I think we'll be taking Radulov, unless I want to take someone like Campoli. Now nah, we've taken enough defensemen here in this draft. Let's take Radulov. Welcome to the Checking Lions. He is a 64 overall, medium top six, two-way forward. I think what I might do for this 40th overall pick is trade back to 23 and 26. Detroit has those two picks. And right around there is when that medium elite goaltender is supposed to go. As we take a look here, if we go back to uh, Wallstat, yeah, he's around 58. And then at 63, there's someone from the Czech Republic, Matuas Mensik. Sorry, I know I butchered that, but that's <laughs> that's the best I got. So I, I think we take the medium elite goal, possible medium elite goaltender gem in Wallstat, and then with the other Detroit pick, we take Mensik. So we get 55 and 58. And they do want 40. So I think this will work. I mean, there is a pretty impressive forward here available at 40. Yanni Hakarainen, who had eight assists and two goals in Liga. I think I want to move up instead. I think I'll use our third and Toronto's second to move up to 55. And then I'll try to get a fourth back as well. So 62 and 73 for 55 and 100. Will that work? Trade accepted. Very nice. So now we still get to make this pick at number 40. And Hakurainen looks pretty good. It says he is possibly three years away from the NHL, so mid-60s. Pretty good stat line there. Two goals and eight assists. Not looking at his penalty minutes, but maybe he's a power forward. So I think I'm going to take a chance on Yanni Hakurainen. Welcome to Czech Republic. He is a sniper. 64 overall, medium top six sniper. So I will take that. So let's move on to pick number 55 now, where we will... Hopefully end up taking that goaltender, presuming he's still there. I don't see why he wouldn't be. Yes, he is. Wallstat, uh, yeah, you're the guy I traded back for, or uh, traded up for, rather. So we are taking you with this pick. Welcome to the Czech Republic, Wallstat. He is a medium starter, 62 overall. He was that gem, though, so maybe, I don't know, maybe the game gives him better growth because he's a gem. <laughs> Who knows? So going to our pick at number 63 now, so... I guess it's a good thing we didn't trade for Mensik. He has a medium bottom six, two-way forward. That wouldn't have been good, at least as far as value goes. So it would, would have been nice to get the Czech-born player, but overall, I'm glad we didn't trade for him. I think with this pick, I'll just take a chance on Nathan Franco. He looks like he could be generated. He is, unfortunately, a medium top nine. So maybe we can get some good growth out of him in the AHL. Simulating to pick 95 now. That other goaltender should still be there at this point. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. He was one pick away from being taken. I'll, I'll call that a stroke of good luck. Because I really forgot which pick he was going with. I, I knew it was somewhere in the 90s, but I didn't think it would be... This very pick. <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, welcome to the team, Alex McCutcheon. He is a 57 overall, medium elite. So, overall, this has been a very solid draft for your checking lines. So, let's get to pick 100. With this pick, we are going to take Jeffrey Elliott. I'm liking the way he looks. Unfortunate, medium bottom six. Now, I'm thinking Derek Bentley because he's only three years away from the NHL this late in the draft. So, that could be a good pick. That could be a real good pick. Yep, Bentley. What are you all about? Ooh, low elite enforcer defenseman. Let's go, Derek Bentley. This is this is turning out to be a pretty good draft for us here so far. We need at least one checkpoint player in there. Let's go with Jakub Brabinec. <laughs> Once again, probably the wrong pronunciation, but there you go anyway. So I, I, AHL top six, unfortunately. I don't mind a few busts here in this draft, especially since we've... <laughs> Mostly seemingly struck gold. Now we're going to take Reed Pekka. Low bottom six. Now we're going to take Uriel Doherty. Okay. I, I mean, not a fan of the overall, but low top four defenseman. As far as the potential goes, that's pretty good. All right, I think we got to try again for this Czech player, even if just for his name. Mikhail Gut. Let's go. Come on, Gut. Be something good. Be something good. Trust in my gut? Nope. That's unfortunate. All right, so welcome to the checking lines. Stillman, Lambos, Radulov, Hakarainen, Wellstat, Franco, McCutcheon, Elliott, Bentley, Brabinec, Pekka, Daugherty, and Gut. Okay, so I've already cut all the guys who did not want to re-sign in the AHL, and we are down to our NHL players and our RFAs. So, Bacchus, I'm immediately going to cut you. You were just in there for side cap filler. Lievo, I think, I think you were a pretty good fit for at least the fourth line. I'll... Get you back for some depth. 
1.6 for one year. I'll give you 1.5. TVR, I'll give you one year as well. 1.75. Bluger, one year. 1.5. McCabe, one year. 2.25. RFAs, Elaine, I will sign you. Amadio, uh, he wants a one year, one way deal. He's pretty good in the AHL. He's at the very least a fourth liner. Yeah, I, I guess we could do it. It's not like we're hurting for salary cap right now. 1.15 for one year. I think I'll go two years for you. I'll give you 1.8. Donato, I'll give you one year for two mil. And Nick Ritchie, I uh, don't want to go four years for you. He was pretty good. I mean, he wasn't as good as I wanted him to be, but he, he still had some pretty good stats, especially given the team that we had. So I'll give him one year, just so that he's still an RFA next year. I'll give him 4.4. Goaltenders, you have Demko. He may grow. He may not. He had a 908 save percentage last year in 37 games. It can't hurt to at least give him one year. Um, 1.4 for one year. I think we can release Gillies. We don't necessarily need him. And then I would like to get Brassois back for a backup. And I'm pretty sure everyone has re-signed. No UFAs. No RFAs. Very nice. So now we do have our guys in Aronson, Stillman, all these guys. But I'm going to hold off on signing at least Aronson until the preseason. I want to see how he jumps. I'm pretty sure he'll be playing this year. But... I'm just going to hold off for right now. There's no need to sign him right away. Same thing for Stillman. I mean, I, I think he'll just end up staying in the U.S. for this entire year anyway. But still, there's no point in signing him right now as long as he gets some good growth in the U.S., which I think he will. I, I hope that he gets the same kind of growth that Aronson did. I mean, I doubt that he'll put up the same kind of points that Aronson did, but he does have that 80 overall offensive awareness so I, I think it'll be best to leave Stillman in the U.S. League but Aronson should be ready to go for this year he's got that 88 offensive awareness I don't see why he wouldn't grow past the 79 overall okay so we here we are on July 1st and I think what we need at least for the first line is a nice playmaker as we have I'm anticipating Richie and Hints to be on that first line so I think they could use a good playmaker to be alongside them and the one that fits the bill the most Alex Wenberg, he is an 84 overall, 38 assists last year, and 12 goals. Pretty decent offensive awareness at 88. Good puck skills all around, 90s uh, everywhere, basically. He may fit into our top six in all power play lines, so that makes him a good candidate. Then you take a look at his defensive stats, and he's not bad, actually very good. 84 takeaways to 40 giveaways last year. Not physical, uh, kind of brutal on faceoffs, unfortunately, but Hintz is going to be in the middle anyway, so... I think Wenberg on the wing with Richie and Hintz will be a pretty good addition. He wants three years. We'll give him three years, and I'll give you 6.6. .6. I want to see if we can move into the future with Wenberg. I'm I'm not 100% confident <laughs> that he'll work out with chemistry, but he is of the right age, and I think he'll be good enough, at least for right now, to help supplement the development of someone like Richie and possibly of hints as well. Now, another signing that I want to make, this time for the second line, Anthony Duclair. He is a sniper, at least as far as his player type goes. Not much as far as actually scoring goals. But I believe he will be a good fit for the second line, as he does fit the pro scout assessment for our head coach's second line. And who would be on the second line currently is Janssen and Nemesnikov, who are playmaker and sniper, so you get that... A sniper, sniper, playmaker combination. You may be able to get a plus three, possibly a plus five. So I'm optimistic about the chemistry that Duclair might bring. He's also of age. He's 25. So I think I'll give him four mil for three years as we'll see what he does in year number one. Year number two it will be his sort of second chance if he doesn't have a good year in year number one. And then year number three of his contract, we can always trade him. There's there's a lot of options that you can have with a three-year deal. So uh, I'm liking a three-year deal for Anthony Duclair. I think he he's not exactly great defensively, but I'm hoping that the possible boost in chemistry that he'll bring to that second line will boost not only him, but Nemesnikov and Janssen as well. And our next move is actually going to be in the form of a trade. From the Vegas Golden Knights, they have a young defenseman on the block in Nick Hague. Now, he's only 78 overall, but he is 22 years of age. Maybe we could see some growth out of him as a defensive defenseman. Not making much at all. Only 790000 for one year. 
Let's get him on the trade. And going the other way will be a couple of forwards in the form of Shaw and Sorella. Shaw barely played last year. He only had 11 games played as an 81 overall. I couldn't find a place to fit him in the lineup where he would fit the chemistry. So we're going to send him out the other way along with Sorella, who uh, he barely played last year as well. Figured I may as well give him a chance somewhere else. And we're also going to include, I would say, Arizona's third. So Shaw, Sorella, and Arizona's third for Nick Haig. Proposed trade. Trade accepted. And Alexander Wenberg has signed on with your checking Lions, as has Anthony Duclair. So now we take a look at our roster. In goal, you have Demko and Kincaid. And in the minors, you have Brassois and Lions. So we are set in goal. On defense, you have Shea, Larson, McCabe, Foote, TBR, and Haig. So we do need a seventh defenseman in there somewhere. Uh, hopefully Stillman can grow over the course of the season. He's not going to be playing in the NHL this season or in pros at all. But still, uh, hopefully he can be better sooner rather than later. But we are going to need that seventh defenseman out of free agency. And as far as fours go, you have Janssen, Wenberg, Hintz, Richie, Nemesikov, Duclair as the top six, I'm guessing. And then Bluger, Donato, Lievo, Ocpozo, Amedio. Yeah, so Aronson's going to be in there probably on the third line. Uh, yeah, I think we're, we could use a couple more depth forwards and a depth defenseman or two as well. But other than that, I think we're pretty much set here. Although we do have to take into consideration that we still have 33 million in <laughs> salary cap space left to spend. I think I would like to get Ryan Hartman for the fourth line. He looks pretty good. Asking for 2.4, 2.5. Well, once again, salary cap doesn't really matter right now as we have plenty of salary to go around. Good with the takeaways and giveaways. Good hitter. Not great with the face-offs, but I can live with that as long as he's getting the hits and doing well with the takeaways and giveaways. So, Hartman, I would love if you could sign on for... I'll give you one year for... We can afford to overpay a little bit here. I'll give you a 3.1. So, for a seventh defenseman, I think we're going to go after the veteran, Carl Gunnarsson. He fits possibly fits in on all defensive pairings and all penalty kill lines. So, I think he would make for a nice veteran... Uh, as a replacement player to put in there whenever needed. So I'll give him one year for 2.25. And I think another veteran signing I want to make, Travis Zajac. He is incredible at faceoffs, 94 for faceoff rating. And uh, I think he'll, overall he would make a nice addition to help out our young guys. He's possibly fits on a third line, so he may be a great possession center for someone like Aronson. So I think we will get Zajac for one year. And we'll give him 2.25 as well. There's Hartman. There's Zajac. There's Gunnarsson. So after all that, we still have 27.8 mil left to work with. So we may as well get a veteran offensive defenseman to counter the defensive defenseman that we got in Gunnarsson. So Hunt, I will give you one year for, let's say, 2.4 just because you have the Rangers going after you. And, well, we can afford to pay the 2.4 anyway. And we're going to need to get even more salary on board after this. So we're probably going to have to end up making a trade for a bad contract here. Is probably what we're going to have to do. Here we go. Lucic. 78 overall. Two years left on a $5.14 million deal. Let's see if, what we can get for Lucic here. Let's see if we can move our fourth up to a third. So nothing too big. But we're taking on the contract of Lucic. And we're possibly moving this up to a third. Let's see. Proposed trade. Very nice. Certainly no drawbacks on that one. Now we get Brad Hunt on our team as well. So after all that, we are still at 22.54. <laughs> we have to make another trade for a bad contract, presuming there's still one out there. Here we go. Andrew Ladd. 76 overall. $5.5 million for the next two years on the New York Islanders. We will be taking him off their hands. I'm going to try to move up our fifth for a third. Let's see if this works. Proposed trade. Beautiful. And after that, we still have 17.8 million left to work with. So I need to make, I think, one more trade for a bad contract. And then we will finally be good to go into the regular season. Here we go. Franz Nielsen from the Detroit Red Wings for one year at 5.25 million, 78 overall. You know what? Those two thirds were fairly easy to get. So let's see if we can move up to a second by chance. I doubt this will go through, but let's just see if it works. Proposed trade, rejected. Yeah, I figured. Now let's try a third for next year for Nielsen on the second. Proposed trade, nope. All right, so it's probably that second in there. That's fine. We'll just, I guess we'll get a third back. So let's try a third for next year because they don't have a third for this year. And then we'll get a fourth for this year as well. And I will include a fifth for next year. 
Will this work? Nope. Okay, let's just try to move that fifth up to a third then for Nielsen. Nope. How about we just move up our fourth for next year up to the third? Proposed trade? Really? Well, I, I guess I guess Detroit doesn't need to clear up cap, right? So, yeah, I don't think that's going to work. Hmm. No, this one could be an interesting one. Seabrook. <laughs> he's, three year, he's got three years on his deal. But I don't think that'll hurt us, honestly, because I don't foresee anyone that we really need to pay in three years. And Well, I mean, we might have to pay, what's his name, Aronson by that point. But don't forget, he hasn't even signed his first contract yet. So Seabrook's contract will be up by the time Aronson needs to sign his big boy contract. So, yeah, I think Seabrook might honestly be the best bet here. And you know Chicago needs to clear up cap as well. So maybe we, they might even be willing to give up a second here. If we go Calgary's third, proposed trade, not sufficient at all, okay. Then what I think I'll do, I'm going to try to move up two-fourths for two-thirds in each respective year. So our fourth for this year and next year for Seabrook and Chicago's thirds for this year and next year. Proposed trade, trade accepted. So there you go. We are finally at a decent salary cap space remaining. We have 12 mil remaining. So uh, that being said, I think we can finally move on to preseason. So here we have our roster to start year number two. And Thatcher Demko has grown to an 84 overall. He is an official starter in the NHL now. So good to know that he's still had some growth in him. Uh, Kincaid is an 81. And then in the system, you have Brassois and Lyon. For defensemen, you have Shea, Larson, Foote, McCabe, TVR, Hunt, and Gunnarsson. And in the system, you have Haig, who's a 79. I think we're going to bring him up. You have Seabrook as well, and then Murray, Lazarev, Niemela, all these guys. And then forwards, you have Wenberg, Janssen, who's an 85, Hintz is an 83, Richie's an 83, Duclair's an 82, Nemestikov's an 82 as well, so decent top six there. Donato, 82, Hartman, 80, Bluger, 80, Zajac, 80, Lievo, 79, Okpozo, 79 as well, and Lucic is 78. In the system, you have Amadio, Ladd, Elaine, and Gonchar. Now, the real question is... What is the growth of Devin Aronson? As we take a look at unsigned, he is an 81 overall, so I think he is ready to go to play in the NHL. It does say third line scoring forward. He's got that 89 offensive awareness. He's got a pretty good shot. I think he is ready to go. We have struck gold with that second line. Janssen, Nemestikov, and Duclair is a perfect fit all around for the first line, or the second line, I should say. Ooh, I cannot wait to see that line in action. Now, we did have the same kind of thing with the first line last year with Richie, Johansson, and Nyquist. And that didn't really do much for us. But still, nice to see the plus five there. That means Janssen's a 90. So, looking forward to seeing what he can do. For right now, I have Aronson on the first line with Wenberg and Richie. Because they get the plus three. And then you have Hintz, Zajac, and Hartman. I think I want Zajac in the middle just because his face-offs are, like, insane. And then you have Hartman, Bluger, Lievo, and Pozo. Does anyone scratched who shouldn't be? Donato. And on the back end, you have Shea and McCabe, Larson and Gunnarsson, and then TVR and Foot. And I think we're going to leave it off here. In the next one, we will get started with year number two. So let me know what you guys think of everything that happened in the offseason, and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>